five that morning as I was preparing for work. A peace officer came to the back door and knocked on it. And uh, I thought, well, let me uh, evade the situation here and see if it gets, goes a little bit easier. <laughs> so I went down the cellar and, and I heard knocks on the front door. And they kept knocking until Lindsay got up, but I was already down in the basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came back to the basement. I was hidden in the back of the, the far room in the basement in the corner. And uh, Rick Petticord shined his flashlight on the back slowly, slowly, slowly. Until he peeked around the corner and saw him there. And <laughs> I said, yeah, that's me. So I said, give myself up. And I, came out of the room, and as soon as I came out of the room, put my hands out to get handcuffed, they grabbed me and threw me down on the floor. When they threw me down on the floor, kicked me in the side, one shot, that's not the one that hurt me. I'm used to getting kicked around a little bit. So when they uh, I took my hands and put them around my back for them, and they put handcuffs on them, and as soon as they put the handcuffs on, they stood on my head. And when they stood on my head, he actually jumped up on the air with his one foot on my head and kicked me in the ribs. And then his foot came off my head and then he kicked me three or four more shots in the side. The black gentleman on the other side of him, he came over and kicked me once. Didn't hurt me like Rick Pettigore did. And within minutes they had me, within a minute they had me up, taking me out, naked, of course. I had a sweatshirt on, but I didn't have any clothes on from the waist down. They took me out in the parking lot here at the historic York. And I stood out there for five or ten minutes while they made several calls. And as he came over and asked if I was okay, and Rick said, I want to make sure she stays in jail overnight and I want her arrested. And they put me in the police car with the state trooper and then taken to the York prison. The, a lady came in the room, saw me naked, said, get something on that guy, this is ridiculous. And uh, the one gentleman walked away to get me what looked like a hospital apron dress. And she said, are you okay? Because my head was busted open and blood was pouring down my face. I said, and not really. She said, what happened? And I said, well, they beat me up. She said, she said, I want this guy to go to the hospital. She said, what's wrong? What else is wrong with you? I said, I think my back's really bad, you know. I guess from the adrenaline pumping, you don't really feel the pain. I know this from my own personal experience. You mm -hmm. don't feel the pain at first, but only after like 15 minutes, a half hour later, you start suffering a trauma of your physical symptoms. And I couldn't, I was at the point where I was starting to not be able to breathe. And she said, I want him to go to the hospital at that point. The state trooper said, no, I, I'm not going to fool around in this kind of situation all day. I've been through this before. He said, I'll just take him straight over to Lancaster, because at the Lancaster County they have a hospital in, in the prison. Uh, at that time, the state trooper took, he said, I can see where this is heading right now. So he took pictures of my forehead, which was sliced open like four-ish gash, with blood running over it. And had me lift up my sweatshirt, took pictures of my the side of my ribs and, and the like. At that moment, I told Rick, he said, Rick had a, a different kind of attitude. And, and we had we shared a few words. And I told him, you know, it was you know, not appropriate to. Using somebody without his handcuffs on, you know, <laughs> not that it made any difference. We went over from that. We went to the Lancaster County Prison, went into commitment where you wait to go into. Now they have isolation where everybody goes to isolation for a week first. While I was in commitment, the pain was so severe that I couldn't breathe, and uh, from my ribs being beat in, the, the uh, contusions were one thing on the side, and they were swelling up. And I had a multiplicity of them, like six big bumps, you know, where footprints smashed into my ribs. Uh, the other problem that I suffered was from kicking my ribs in, they must have pushed the, the ribs into the sternum area and into the backbone. 
and because that was starting to swell up now, uh, I couldn't breathe at all. And I was, I was very fortunate because the prison warden was walking by, and I, I knew her from before, and I told her, you know, look, you know, I, I'm not a troublemaker, but I'm dying in here. I cannot breathe, and I'm going out and going in and out of consciousness. So she called the the, uh, the medical staff, and they rushed in quickly, took me in, started working on me, gave me medication. Uh, that was on a Friday. They don't have any doctors there over the weekend, and they don't even take x-rays until Tuesdays. So I waited in, in prison from Friday to Tuesday, and they took x-rays and found out that my ribs were you know, all bruised up. And what had happened was I had a collapsed lung inside. It was hanging in there loose, and it was uh, collapsed. So they told me what I should do is breathe you know, every minute if I can, try to breathe as much as I can to open up that collapsed lung in hopes that it might, you know, expedite its process of being saved. And uh, they put me on 16 pills a day. I took from Friday to Friday until I was redeemed. Then Friday. You're still standing? I'm still standing. <laughs> Bill told me about this uh, state cop from the Fugitive Retrieval Service up in Harrisburg. So Bill said, I know Big Daddy. And he said, oh, you mean Daddy Justice? And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, the guy with the camera. And he says, oh, geez, I don't want to get involved in this way without saying it, that he's not really pleased with them beating people up over in New York. Does. He looks a lot like a thin version of the guy from S.H.I.E.L.D. Bald, muscular, ugly, and mean looking, right? Rick Pettigrew. So he gets out of the car, starts walking up. The other guy is behind him. And as he's walking up, I step out in front of him quick and I say, hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. Rick Pettycore, right? So the guy misses some support payments. You come in, you kick his lungs in, collapse his lung, arrest his daughter for a felony. Seem a little excessive? A little excessive, Rick? <laughs> he didn't say nothing but except for his face. But the thing that was hilarious is the other cop said, ha! <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. Them lying dogs is going down. He said, ha ha. He laughed. And he was like, good for me. I, I was I, inside at the hearing. I looked over at him and he gave me the high, the high and I, I, looked, I gave him the thumbs up. I said, you're all right, buddy. Is that why you don't work for the drug task force anymore? Had too much of that? Even in York County, they couldn't tolerate that, Rick? That's all right, I'll be in a minute, thanks. Thanks for holding the door for me. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't stomp on people's lungs. You don't arrest their daughters. And there's a slow, slow train coming. You don't go for support, warrant, and stomp on a man's lungs until he collapses his lungs. He would never do that. He would never arrest the poor man's 18-year-old daughter because she didn't tell him where his dad was. Come on. Is this America or what, folks? Rick Pettigore, don't he look the part? Don't he look the part? How'd you like to deal with that guy with a gun and a badge in a small room, huh? Welcome to the Drug Task Force in New York, folks. Daddy Justice, signing off, heading in. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide Where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride Then I get to the bottom and I see you again Yeah, yeah, yeah Well, I trust you enjoyed our jaunt through the paradigm of demonic relations Let's tally up the toll Altogether, they collected uh, somewhere around a couple hundred bucks. The downside, father stomped on, collapsed lung, thrown in jail a week, on medical treatment the whole time. Mother signed away the $4,000 because she didn't want to take the chance that her daughter would be thrown in jail again. The young lady, she's facing five years in jail. The system? Everything's honky-dory.